Tracy, thank you so much for your call. 1-800-316-316 to join in our conversation. Let's take another call. Alex is in Melbourne. Hello, Alex. Welcome. Alex, are you with us? Alex, if you've uh, lost us, uh, you might like to call us back, 1-800-316-316. Melinda, let's come back to what I said would be, for some listeners, quite shocking because you visit schools, uh, not just state schools, but private schools. A lot of those private schools are Christian schools. Mm -hmm. And you're looking and you're listening to what Mm -hmm. students are telling you. What are you hearing from Christian schools in a comparison to what you might even be hearing in state schools? Yes, well, it's very distressing, Neil, when uh, Daniel and I go into faith-based schools, uh, which have, you know, particular uh, values and mission statements, uh, to find that the stories that we hear in quite a lot of Christian schools are as bad as anything we hear in any other school. And this shows the impact of of a sexualized culture, a pornified world uh, that our children are growing up in. It has infected uh, the faith-based schools as well. And one of the worst stories that I heard last year was from girls in grades five and six at a a serious Christian school, serious about its, its Christian teaching and mission, Uh, telling us that not only were they subjected to sexual moaning and grunting and groaning noises from the boys every day in the classroom, on the school bus, at the school camp, in the schoolyard, but in the daily worship in the school's chapel. And that was a a new low because it seemed to me that there there was no safe space uh, for girls to exist, that they weren't seen as sex objects, uh, that they weren't going to be subjected to porn-inspired, inappropriate sexual behaviours uh, from from the boys. So, uh, you, you know, we will work with any school that, that wants us, absolutely. Um, and we help, uh, we help the teachers to deal with these inappropriate behaviours and to provide that safe educational environment because it doesn't serve the boys that are engaging in these behaviours to allow them to let them get away with it, to just dismiss it as banter or boys will be boys or it's just a joke because it's not setting the boys up for success in life. If they're sexually groaning and moaning at girls at young ages, uh, often mimicking older boys, they don't always know what it means, uh, and then they continue to do that through high school, and then they leave school and say they enter policing or they enter politics, they become a captain of industry, or uh, they become a a judge sitting on a bench hearing a a sexual harassment or sexual assault trial, uh, what will be the outcome? if uh, they didn't learn appropriate behaviours as as boys. So we all have a duty of care to our young people and we all need to model the right uh, behaviour and also have appropriate uh, consequences uh, for when uh, young people aren't living up to the values of, of, of the school. And a lot of people, of course, are involved in an ongoing, it perhaps will never end, a debate around whether you have schools for boys and schools for girls or you've got mixed schools. Uh, Those sorts of debates do continue on and uh, some parents will have stronger views than others. Uh, That's not our conversation for today. That's perhaps a conversation for another day. But we're taking calls 1-800-316-316. 